I called this meeting today is that there's been a lot of contention in upgrading the Elastic Stack, namely because a couple times already, either uh, the current developers have broken the Elastic delivery mechanism or uh, somebody else has been working on a new layer-based approach and we end up doing the work so we duplicate efforts across teams and we have no idea what's happening because we're all operating in a vacuum. And I want to eliminate that vacuum. I want us all to talk. I want us to figure out how this is going to be put together. Basically, who is willing to own what components and how we get this stack moving forward with the 5.0 release? Because as we, some of us may know, uh, we've got some, some fairly crufty and old charms in the store right now that's deploying a 2.x series Elasticsearch. Um, Logstash got a big update that actually lost functionality. Uh, and we just want to bring these back into alignment, get them upgraded to the 5.0 stack. And uh, you have either been identified as a developer or as a stakeholder, as a primary consumer of these charms. Uh, for example, I'm assuming that the charm store is using a little bit of this log stash in the back end for doing uh, log aggregation. And if you're an STS deployment engineer, you've probably got these on site. And my end goal here is to make sure that once this work is completed and we have something for you, that you don't go into a customer deployment site and then walk out with red errors and lost hair and lost sleep. So. Um, to get started, let's go ahead and go around the room, kind of identify you know, who we are, what we work for, just so that way anybody that's following along at home knows uh, who they're talking to and where these uh, sticking points are. So um, start from the left, I see Guillermo is there. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, uh, I'm part of the online, ser online services team. We are using the Elk stack for login aggregation mostly in a couple of services, not in all yet. And we are on the stakeholder side of things. Okay. Bruce, are you doing notes? Yes. Um, you want me to put those in the meeting minutes too? Yeah, yeah. that would be great. Just so that we have identified who attended. Uh, so let's basically take attendance. Uh, BD, you're next on my list. Okay, maybe he's not. Mr. Wren. Uh, I'm Jay. I work on the Charm Store on the Juju UX team. Um, I'm heavily involved in the deployment and design of the deployment of the Charm Store and related services. And I wish we had Elk. We, uh, we actually ended up not ever deploying it uh, because, uh, well, reasons. Reasons that I'll bring up later, I suppose. So. Okay. I think I know what some of those are. Mr. Castro. George Castro, just a charmer, just hanging out, seeing what's up, helping to take notes with Matt. Mr. Monroe. Hey, I'm Kevin Monroe. Uh, I'm working on a lot of in here, particularly interested in... Who's mine? Yeah. Can't understand a word coming out of your mouth, Kev. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll sum it up for Kev. Kev's uh, he, he's he's a software engineer on our big data team. Uh, he's a consumer of uh, all of the components for little data problems. <laughs> uh, Marco. Hey, Marco Cheppi. Um, farmer, general consumer of Elasticsearch and the Elastic Stack, and interested in seeing it updated to 2.0, 5.0. Mr. Bruiser? Yeah, I'm Matt Bruzek. I'm on the Charm Ecosystems team. Um, I am interested in this because it's part of uh, the canonical distribution of Kubernetes. Perfect. <clears throat> and I want to see it be awesome. And Mr. Haddon? <clears throat> This is actually a good uh, good mic check. Mic check. Yep, we got you, Beatty. Nice. All right, go ahead and give us your your uh, your quick introduction. It's Beatty. I work for Create Drive. We use Elasticsearch and uh, probably ten or more of our our production apps. So we also have uh, multiple different environments for each app. So I'd say probably have like. Elastic deploys going on across the place, uh, all different versions and different development teams wanting to upgrade to 5.0 and, and use that new functionality. And 
uh, you know, basically I'm hoping to, that we can come to some kind of converged solution with the uh, classic stack through the charms that both for all of us. Big driver, excellent. And Francis, as a late joiner, give us a quick introduction. Tell us what's, uh, if you're a stakeholder, if a developer, or where you fit in the overarching scheme of this meeting. Sure, so I work on a landscape team. We're uh, primarily a consumer with uh, landscape itself and about a half dozen other web services we're working on. So par primary interest is uh, as a consumer, although in some cases, uh, you know, we're trying to integrate landscape into Elk as well as, uh, so may to some degree we'll, we'll be contributing, but mostly as a consumer. Yeah. Um, can you hear me at this time? Yes. Cool. Uh, I'm Tom with IS. We we actually don't um, have an ELK stack deployed that we use in production currently. We long, long time ago, we uh, brought one up uh, with ancient Asian version of Elasticsearch. The big sticking point for us was around log sanitization and getting filters written to be able to actually display logs to developers and things uh, kind of stagnated a little bit since then. My biggest sort of interest at the moment is actually because of Kubernetes, because it's part of the canonical Kubernetes uh, bundle, and because at some point in the not too distant future, uh, IS may be asked to to run that. Uh, I'm very interested in seeing the the elk portion of things uh, get into a good state. Excellent, and I am a big plus one to that. So thank you everybody for your introductions. This will really help, especially for the, now this video is being recorded. This will go out to the uh, interested parties that could not be here, uh, one of which is Stuart Bishop. I've got a couple developers inside Elastic Company itself that could not attend that are heavily interested in, in what the outcome of these meetings will be. So uh, just know that moving forward, we are working directly with Upstream as best we can to deliver their community edition to everybody uh, in a consistent manner using the charms. Are, are we putting this video up as part of our, you know what, like I, on our YouTube? We sure could. Like in, yeah, let's do that. Okay. After this, I'll, I'll take that item. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So um, I'm going to run down through this topic sheet that we have in the shared notes. Um, so the very first bit is uh, how can we deliver 5.0 reliably as an in-place upgrade? That's the overarching topic. So let's figure out what components that we actually need to identify for an MVP. Uh, should be pretty simple. I had a little bit of these down here at the bottom uh, underneath projects that need active contributors and maintainers. I'm gonna move this up underneath this bullet point. And are there any additional components that we have identified that we need or we want for this stack? Uh, this should be the basic Belk stack. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Beats are the replacement for Logstash Forwarder. They're Golang-based shippers. They come with a complete toolkit, so if it's not monitoring something that we need it to monitor, we, it can be augmented. Uh, they're written in Golang. Uh, Kibana for visualization, Logstash for log munging and routing, as well as buffering, and then Elasticsearch for your primary data store. Uh, right, it is just called the Elastic Stack now, but that's also not to be confused with their commercial offering, which is similarly titled as Elastic Stack. So yeah, you're probably right, Belk is probably not a, a preferred upstream name. Um, but is there are there any other components that people are aware of that we need to actually have for this in-place upgrade? Because as I understand it, the 5.0 refresh just replaces these components, and then we have to do whatever data migrations are required for that, and then we're basically done well, so long as we've question. got feature comparity. Right, go ahead. If we're talking about if we're talking about scope, since none of these outside of the Beats agents exist in Xenial, data migrations for trusted. Couldn't we just make 5.0 and reactive of a Xenial forward-facing update? I think we could, yes, because I don't, I think you're right. I don't believe that Xenial exists for Elasticsearch or Logstash or Kibana. I think that those three are tied to trusty in the promulgated namespace. Yeah, if we just made it Z4, I would be kind of crap for people that are on Trusty, but it would give us time to really think about what it would take to upgrade uh, a 2.x 5.0, which I know requires a bit of munging of data, but also more importantly, how to upgrade from non-reactive to a reactive charm, which has some implications for managing relationship data after a uh, so it seems to be much easier if we all just focus on Xenial and 5.0 for Elasticsearch and such. Okay. Similar to what we've been doing for 
for a bunch of other terms, right? Yeah. yeah, or a bunch of other terms. Yeah, and I think it's kind of crucial to to make sure that we do that as reactive from the start, rather than kind of like, hey, let's port the current charms to to Xenial and then work on upgrading them. I would argue that if we're going to do this, we should do it reactive out of the box and just kind of reimagine how the charms would be if we did them. If we had the reactive framework when these were created, which was we've been around for a little while now. So I think it's a little it's a little cleaner too because. Like everything about Elasticsearch for this release has changed upstream. Like, it, I don't want to say it's a totally new product, but I think it's kind of easier for us to say, you know, here's where the old world ends, right? And use this opportunity with them changing so much for us to be like, now's the time to basically have like a brand new charm written with modern stuff with way more feedback as opposed to trying to, right? I agree. And I also think that it's important to call out for the people that are following along at home that Reactive is actually a uh, technology that we use in building charms. Uh, it allows you to declare states and respond to things that happen. So instead of basing this on like our current Elasticsearch charm is Ansible, this gives it a Python rewrite. It's very clean, very easy to understand. And the, the concerns that are contained in just the layer for the Elastic Stack components only pertain to that component and how it's going to communicate with other components. Um, okay, so we've is everybody in agreement that we do a Xenial and Reactive update with complete greenfield development? Is that that's that was the outcome of that last uh, question? Speak now or forever hold your peace. I have a dumb question for the audience though. Are are any of you guys here on this call planning on sticking with trust with the old version of the OS, but expecting to run a newer stack? Just wondering if anyone's doing that. I guess, is anyone deploying? I know we've heard a lot of people saying they're either not yet or they're experimenting, but do we have anyone using the current Elastic Stack in a deployment? Yeah, in non services, we are using the current charms. If if we were to move to a Xenial, well, you already plus one this, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna simply state, for this, would you guys do a manual, would you all do like a manual migration where you stood up the new stack on Xenial and then exported the data, did the conversion, and imported it into Elasticsearch for an upgrade? Yeah, maybe we don't even migrate the data. Just spin up a new instance of the stack and switch all the services to, to that. OK, cool. I think it'd be, it would behoove us to find out who else is. I think the goal eventually would be that the reactive charm grows to encompass Trusty as a deployable series, which would give an upgrade path for those running the older Trusty charm. But there's a lot of... Well, we just did something similar to this with etcd, Marco, where we basically take a snapshot of the data and give us an opportunity to re-import. Elasticsearch does have a migration tool for running these, and I think that we can encapsulate that. I'm going to put that link in the sidebar. It's also in the document. Um, I completely agree. the The question we're still we're still having the answer, which is requiring, a likely a new release of the reactive framework for two point oh, is how do you manage relationship data from a non reactive charm to a reactive charm, mm. given that we're responding to hooks and not environment state. So, just because of the way relationships are implemented in the current reactive framework, makes it kind of hard to rebuild state when you can't re-execute a set of hooks. No, you're right. <laughs> Talk with like Corey and Ben a little bit about it. I think there's a way forward there, but we have to do work outside of this effort to get that working so that we can do an upgrade from react from non-reactive to reactive charms, which is possible. It'll happen. It's just a matter of time. But yeah, I agree. I think when we looked at this originally, the migration scripts are there, and it'd be very easy to say, what version am I currently running during an upgrade hook? Okay, I need to do a bunch of X, Y, Z steps, or produce an action where an upgrade won't continue until an action or configuration or some other step is run, so it's not implicit, but an explicit thing. But I think that's a solve. That's a problem that we can definitely solve. That's not actually what I was referring to. I was thinking the redeploy and the migrate. So the idea is that you deploy the new stack, regardless if you do it via relation or via a, pay, a resource that you can then attach to the charm to just do a restore from that dump. Because that migration script appears to be something we can just do with a relation set, and then it basically vacuums out the old data store and puts it in the new cluster. 
And that supports well, in that the, case, the cattle then, versus yeah. pet story, too. So I don't know if that's the direction that we want to take, but it is an option. Do you know if the migration, this may be a question out of scope, but do you know if the migration script is item potent? That I do not know. I have had zero uh, interaction with this outside of discovering the GitHub repository and reading the readme. That's it. So we should probably ask them, like, how is this, like, officially supported, or is this a guy who kind of did a one-off on the side? You know what I mean? It's under, it's under slash elastic, so I assume it's supported. Well, it's referenced from their official documentation. There we go. Oh, okay. All right. I would just double-check. I don't know. No, that's actually a great idea. Since it's, somebody it's a nice way out, way. right? If Upstream is handling all the migrations, all we have to do is make sure we do the right thing when we stand up the new one and do the old one, but... I, th I think it'd just be good to know that, guys, we're going to recommend this. They're like, sounds great. We're up. OK. Um, yeah, it's not a problem. I'm, I'm happy to follow up with them. I've been talking to Tudor, who is a, uh, I hope I said his name right. He's a developer for Elastico. And I'll make sure that I follow up with him regarding these questions. Because if he doesn't know the answer, he'll route me to the right people. So I think, I feel pretty confident there that we're good. Um, all right, with a lot of those questions in place, uh, are, we, are we good to move on to the next bits? I think that some of these questions that I had are going to be invalidated by the direction we're taking, but that's progress. So, OK. Uh, next question is, what can we do to collaborate more with the upstream developers wanting to use the Elastic Stack? So this is the, the James Beatties of the, of the meeting. Um, as you're an upstream developer, I know that you've written some layers already targeted. I believe it was towards Kibana for getting the Kibana 5.0 out. And uh, my question is, what can we do to work with you better? Because historically, we've released some preliminary work, and it's invalidated some of the stuff that you've worked on. And I'm sure that that's frustrating. Uh, and I believe that this is a byproduct of our ecosystem right now not having a repository for top for top level layers, right? We just assume the charm is the most important thing. So you had no idea that we were even working on some of this stuff. Sure, sure. What could we do to make this better for you um, other than just calling so these meetings? I, I mean, I've been uh, I've been interfacing to Elasticsearch from uh, quite a few different. Uh, <laughs> so we were. we're uh, you're cutting out pretty bad there, uh, Mr. Beatty. I'm sorry about that. Can you guys hear me now? Yep. Uh, yeah, so basically, like, the Elasticsearch Grails plugin, it, it basically needs to initialize. It, you can initialize it a few different ways. You can give it a YAML file with a list of Elasticsearch nodes, or you can initialize it in in the running code base with telling it where an Elasticsearch client is. And what the plugin will do is it, actually acts as a Elastic node. The Grails application it talks to the cluster as if it was an actual Elasticsearch client uh, using the, uh, it, uh, might be getting my terminology mixed up, but I think we're, in that case, using the transport protocol instead of just uh, the HTTP API. So, if, like, if I'm deploying an Elasticsearch cluster, a, a Grails app, that it's now going to, that application is now going to know about all the other clients of Elasticsearch because it's a 
cost of the cluster of that Elasticsearch cluster because it's recognized as a client node. That plugin has the capability to introspect information about the cluster and then know know how to uh, communicate and perform the best way that it should depending on what nodes exist. Well, for a PHP app, let's say the PHP plugin doesn't have that capability about all of the Elasticsearch instances and load balance correctly. In other use cases, the, uh, the best practice might even be to just stick a load balancer in front of a, a cluster of Elasticsearch data nodes, nodes and then just tell your application about that load balancing endpoint. I mean, if I to kind of close this, up, wrap this up, I, it has to be a converted solution we could land on that will facilitate the use case of connecting and talking to Elasticsearch, whether I'm a Grails plugin who is maintained by the Elastic community and has based functionality, or whether I'm just an application that takes an Elasticsearch config. At, like supporting all of the different classes has certainly been a trying experience. I think that, you know, it, throughout this process, I'm sure we can identify some kind of best practice that, that could just be a flattened method that works across all of the different, all the different ways. So to recap, if I understood the statement correctly or the problem domain is that we're looking at using, as a, as a consumer of Elasticsearch, that we don't have a good interface defined for connecting to Elasticsearch for all the use cases, whether you're a load balancer or just an end application that needs the endpoint to connect and query data with a username and password. Is that correct? Uh, the username and password yeah, might be extra. Sorry if I added that uh, erroneously. Sorry, right. I, I think that's correct. I mean, uh, I, I, on that same note, what elastic node you connect to it should be determined by what type of elastic search node that is and i know right now we kind of have this like of saying an elastic search node is an elastic search node and it therefore performs all of the functionalities of the different node types of elastic search but i think moving forward the elastic search architecture evolved to the point where we might want to start differentiating between different node types and putting into account in the process of designing this charm, taking into account the possibility that we might need to identify different types of plastic search nodes and, and how that might be done. Okay. We have that in the minutes. I think that that's a really good call out. I was, on, I was unaware of the fact that the elastic nodes uh, have now grown in flavor. Um, is there anybody else on the call that might have experience with this that has already observed this or, or already knows about the different node types? Or is that a point of research where we need to do more discovery? I think it's totally a point of research, but it's something I I started reading up on when I first started trying to do the new Elasticsearch layer. And I struggled with the really just three, you know, it's a master data and an ingestion node. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what a tribe node is, but... Um, I wasn't sure if this is something where we want to tackle it as three separate charms or if we want to try to do something funky like what we did with the just from early version of the MongoDB charm. Um, it's something that we should discuss with people who know more about the architecture before we start going too deep into the charming port. Yeah, that's exactly where I was going to go with that, Marco. Multi-role charms are very hard because it's not obvious to anybody why it does things that it does unless you're super intimate with the code. Yeah, the downside, of course, is if you want a simple two-node Elasticsearch cluster, something that would be potentially relatively difficult to do. Um, it's It's got pros and cons for sure. So it's something that we should have a conversation about. We'll probably take it to the list Someone will have to come up with a pretty. Uh, someone will have to propose an architecture for it, and then hash it out on the Juju list. Okay. That sounds about right. Um, okay, so we, so we touched Elasticsearch. Is there anything else relating to Logstash, Kibana, or the Beat Stack uh, that you would also like to bring up, Mr. Beatty? I think there's probably a, 
I mean, Elastic.co has flattened the way, has really flattened the uh, installation configuration process of the different apps. I mean, I, I think that's part of like the whole jump everything up to 5.0 also so symbolizes to me is that, you know, now everything's the same version and everything kind of installs the same way. It's configured very similarly. I mean, we should come up with an Elastic Co. base layer to handle the different Elastic applications that are packaged similarly, and then we should come up with an Elastic search base layer that possibly just takes options charm for each elastic node type or maybe one or maybe there's a way to do it otherwise but um, you know I, I think the tribe node now is what the client node used to be and so if, if the elastic if the required side of the elastic search interface did a, a connection to the cluster as a tribe node elastic search client using the transport protocol then the the application or whatever was local that was consuming elastic the elastic search connection details just connect as a as a tribe node or as a client to decide whether it should how decide what it should do depending on what elastic search nodes there are and, and how many of them there are what's configured it, itself tribe node, then it can just, every application, I think, could tie any language or, or any framework could then tie into that uh, functionality of, of the client actually being a, a client node as well. That was a lot. Sorry. Oh, we're not talking about an insignificant task here either. So, um, no, that's, that's interesting. Um, I don't know how much of this we can extrapolate. I tried something similar with like BeatSpace, where I handled all of the app logic in one place. I handled rendering a template file in one place with using uh, configuration context. Uh, and then there was a real skinny top layer for each and every beat that I wanted to, to produce. So the idea was that we reduced it from about 120 lines to close to 45. I don't know how much of that's gonna apply to things like interfaces. I think that we really need to sketch the architecture before we have an idea because we really need to capture those ins and outs to kind of contrast and compare with what everything is to make sure we're, we're dealing with similar problems on the Kubernetes side with CNI, which is a network abstraction. Not to spend too much time on that, but the idea is that we're still aggregating our ins and our outs to figure out exactly how to architect that. Um, I don't know that I have anything else to add other than I think that we need to look at it closer and have a bit have a clearer picture of how we're gonna deliver those elastic nodes before we really dive into the to the details of the interfaces. For example, with a tribe node, does it change anything that's actually being sent over the wires? It's still just a host name and port? Is that all that it expects? Well, you end up using the, so there's a, you know, two ways to communicate with Elasticsearch. You could communicate via the HTTP API, or you could, communicate via the transport protocol, which is what the elastic search node would communicate with an elastic search node over port 9300 instead of 92. Three is the like transport protocol. Okay. Port. Right. And so that's if you look at how the elastic search nodes talk to each other, they are in our current elastic search charm, every elastic search node or instance is both a client and a data node mm -hmm. so that any of them can be contacted as a client and they all have each other using the transport protocol but any of them could each be contacted using the HTTP protocol over 200 mm -hmm. to expose interface because we don't we aren't dealing with Transport protocol because everything just want, everything wants to just get that okay. ninety two hundred endpoint. Okay, I think I'm following on with what you're stepping in now. It's more like this transport pro protocol is not so much new as it is like almost like an, a management interface, right? So that's where it's using to actually ship its replication data and things of that nature. It's not shipping that over the public ninety two hundred interface. 
Ex yeah, I, I would expect it. Yeah, you know, it's I don't know what all it's using that port for. I just know that like all this because I had to hook this Grails app up and it's connecting over port 9300 and it also knows everything about the cluster without me telling it anything. So I, I basically did this deep dive of like, you know, what the, what the heck is going on here? Um, and those are some of the details that I landed on. I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm going to revert to my original statement of a little more research into that to get a clearer picture before we make any uh, any hard decisions on that one. Um, if there's no other stanza updates, uh, one of our uh, network restrictions that was actually going to be one of my one of my next questions is that if we're going to be deploying this in network limited environments, which I know that our our internal IS department has very stringent egress rules. There are going to be other enterprises that want to deploy the solution. They're going to have the same problem. And the primary delivery mechanism for Elastic's toolchain is via their PPA, which is going to require explicit firewall opening, proxy access, something something along the, that those lines. If they have a super stringent policy, they're not going to open those up. And the only option that we have then is resources. So are the actual devs the only dependencies that we need to be concerned with? Do we know that everything else is coming from archive? Do we have any kind of a picture as to what this process looks like? Um, and what would a resource look like for the Elastic Charms? Oh, well. Okay, so are, am I inventing a problem, Tom? <laughs> well, no, Elastic Co. has a separate archive outside of so archives is things like the Ubuntu main and universe and multiverse archives, which Elastic does not have their updates in, or PPA on Launchpad, which is not where they host it. They have their own Debian archive external to things like Launchpad and Ubuntu.com. Gotcha. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that that's what I meant by PPAs and archives. So uh, I, I meant PPAs on Launchpad or the official archives. Um, so yes, if it is on somewhere else, that that does tend to be harder for us and we prefer to have either a, uh, a squid proxy in front of it or to pull those into a, a PPA if possible or, or some other, um, you know, admin archive. So I know this is slightly out of scope of charms, but would this be an opportunity for us to snap up the elastic bits we cared about? It would make some things a lot easier with regards to putting bits on disk and predictable upgrades. From our side of things, snaps are, are not a problem. Like, you know, they come from the charm store. We, uh, sorry, from the snap store and we, we have access to that from, from the places we need. So we're, yeah, we, we'd absolutely support that. Is it up the elastic stack charms running on distributions other than Ubuntu? Uh, we get CentOS and Debian out of the box as well. Might be a worthwhile approach. I know things like Elasticsearch will be actually pretty easy to snap up. I don't know about things like Beats. Beats will be easier Beats because are... Beats are just go laying daemon. So long as the only one that'll be problematic would be Packet Beat because it requires PCAP access. Yeah, so you can get PCAP access with the right interface, but um, I'm not sure the Beats the Beats stuff because they're so intrinsically tied at the machine level might require I don't know about those <laughs> I don't know if there's plugs for doing things like get me CPU information from within a snap I haven't really tried that but I know from a lot from a Kibana and a Logstash perspective well, Kibana even easier because that's just a static HTML and a blob of JSON delivered and then Elasticsearch just listens to network bindings which would be snapped up pretty easily um, I wonder if this is not a good opportunity for us to try snapping as delivery mechanism as well for elastic stuff i know we talked with elastico relatively recently about doing snaps and they were interested this might be a nice way to pilot that alongside a new charm which has the layer we have a layer snap already it takes care of the snap installation management i think it's an interface site a couple other things that would make charming wrapping around it pretty easy yeah i thought so this is the thought Okay, so I guess the next question is, if, if we're interested in doing this, do we have any takers for the initial pilot of this? Is anybody interested in looking at those snaps? And what it would take to actually build a snap? Maybe just take one, 
give a kind of a pilot and give us feedback on how that went? I'm not surprised. I'm surprised there's not. I'm, uh, let me rephrase this. What if it's already <laughs> not to search Snap? Let me. I forget how to search the Snap Store. Evan has one, but I'm pretty sure it's in GitHub and not in. I'm not published in the store. Pretty sure you can only search the Snap Store with UApp Explorer. That's what it was called. Okay, I remember. Good luck. I've got that. But you could do it. You can spin up your own local Snap interface thing, but I can't remember the command for it. Does. The WebDM? Snap to play WebDM? That's it. Snap install WebDM. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not to play because Juju. I don't see it in the UAP Explorer. Um, <clears throat> oh, oops. There we go. Try this again. Yeah, no. Uh, but we'll check with the Snap guys. They may have already done the work to Snap uh, Elasticsearch. Then snapping Kibana would be pretty straightforward. If no one's tried snapping, it's a good thing to take a stab at. It's actually quite creating a YAML file that does all the snapping. But if no one else is interested, I'd be happy to try it out. Uh, back to node types real quick. Would it be feasible to, since we want Elasticsearch to be the best possible configuration, whether it's one instance or whether it's instances, would it be feasible to come up with some kind of node mapping that says if one unit of Elasticsearch, of course, then, it get, then it's all the node types. Then these are the optimal configuration when you have two Elasticsearch, three, so on and so forth. And the interface for Elasticsearch and what nodes were what nodes, basically. So the IP address port for a, a tribe node or an ingest node or a data node that could then be returned return through the interface. The Elasticsearch charm would determine what type of node it is and what node attributes it carries with it, depending on how many of that unit has already been deployed. So is that simple? I mean, that's plausible. That's definitely a route we could go with it. I know that not every application lends itself to a, an architecture that simply. We did this with the Kubernetes stuff a little while ago where you just you deployed Kubernetes and then you got a master and a worker and as you scaled it out, you just got more workers and there's some distribution of workloads. There were some problems with that, but that maybe just because of the way people expected to run Kubernetes where people running Kubernetes explicitly wanted to scale the control plane separately from the, the worker plane. I'm not sure if that's a, less, a lesser of concerns where uh, ratio, uh, there's a golden ratio rule essentially for Elasticsearch deployments where you could potentially tweak it, but otherwise the standard ratio is what everyone runs. That is... Um, I have another question to that, this though. If they're all determining their own role type, what happens when you delete one and it no longer has that role type in there? It's like, you've got, a, you've got two data nodes, you delete one of your data nodes and there's also a tribe node and an ingest node. What happens? Do you just now have half the capacity? Does the ingest node convert to a data node? Right. So the, so the question becomes how how do you actually manage that magic state role once it's already been in place? And there's a, there's now a mutation on that model. Uh, leader election, yes, a leader could coordinate these efforts. There are some interesting corner cases where that may not be applicable, but I think uh, I think it's something it's something worth teasing into for sure. I don't want to take up the whole call because we could probably spend the rest of the call sitting here talking about the various ways to implement the different architectures for Elasticsearch. I think it'd be behoove us for those interested in figuring out that architecture, um, like James and a few others that are are high up on the idea of what a what a, a node type would look like, what the dispersal of those look like at scale. Ultimately, we're at the we have to balance simplicity from the user with observability. Um, and the more implicit decisions that we make on behalf of the operator, and the less observable those decisions are, the more likely there is for confusion. Um, so that's the that's the, that's that's the balancing act. Is where do you draw that line? But it's something I think that will take a little bit of time to talk through and figure out if we do this architecture, what are the pros and cons, and then 
find one or two of the best approaches that we can find and then kind of float it past the, the rest of the community at large as uh, here's what we think we should do for architecture. And once we figure out what the architecture is, executing on that architecture will be pretty simple. Um, that's just a matter of putting keystrokes to, to code. Okay. I mean, I'm not opposed to it. I'm just going to play devil's advocate while we're talking about it because I've already been bit by this a couple times. So not that I think my way was the best way or whatever, but it, it certainly turned into a bigger headache. Um, okay, to, to continue pressing through since we're coming down to the last 20 minutes of the minute, um, the last time that we engaged with Elastic Upstream, I'm, I'm actively communicating with them. So that seems good. What's up, George? Sorry, that was an accident. All good. Um, so the next bit that I did definitely want to cover is what layers do we have that we're currently building that are not in the charm uh, promulgated workspace uh, namespace? Because uh, as I understand it, there's been some work on an Elasticsearch charm and there's been some work on a Kibana charm. Um, and I have no idea where those are, who's owning them, what efforts have gone through, what the compatibility looks like between the existing stuff, if there's anything, um, things of that nature. So who owns the elastic right, layer, so the elastic layer rewrite? Like who was working on that? I know for a fact that that exists. That was me. I, I started another rewrite effort. Okay. Uh, so we'll say that Marco, put a couple lines here. I'll put you a link in the side. So it's going to be um, elastic search. I think I'm going to end up, oh, I don't like it, first of all. Um, we kind of got we kind of stopped a little bit into it because we realized that there's a lot larger of an architectural discussion to have. A simple rewrite. Okay, I'll put this down here as whip and then incomplete. Yeah, and this is using resources to deliver Debian packages um, and not using archives, but kind of it's, it's weird shoving a Debian package as a resource when. Mechanisms like apt exist just to get around things like limited egress. I think snapping will be much more effective here. But um, it's a whip, and I think I'm going to move it outside of my personal namespace. Well, once we get some more discussions, I want to move it outside of my namespace and maybe to github.com slash charms or something where it's a little more easy to find and hack on from other people. OK, that sounds good. Um, another one that I was aware of is the Kibana layer. James, I believe that you own that one. I think we lost BD again. All right, do we know if anybody is currently working on Logstash or the Beats stuff? Because I know that I've got some early stuff on Beats. I was going to work on the next iteration. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> All good, man. Uh, you've got Layer Cabana, right? Yeah, I think it was an effort I put in about six months ago uh, just because I wanted a, a Xenial Cabana. Basically took what you had done with the load dashboard action and just folded that into a, a reactive Cabana. It probably needs some touch-ups and updates, but uh, it deploys and and... Uh, meets the same functionality of the current commander. That's fine for me. Can I get a link to that so I can put it in the document? Uh, the idea behind this is that we can all kind of circulate back over these repositories, um, give, take a look. Maybe there's some gems in there that we want to extrapolate and keep. Um, maybe we'll have some review comments for how to, to push these forward towards the 5.0 upgrade. Uh, who knows? The, the idea is basically just to do this information aggregation. So perfect. Uh, client side of Elvis having relations is the only way to configure beats is not enough for some deployments. Okay. Um, what would you like to see changed on that, Guillermo? Exposing uh, the actual config options for the beat itself in the config, or what would work better for your use case? In your case, uh, we are deploying, sorry, we are deploying uh, Elasticsearch and Kibana, Logstash, uh, everything in a separate environment. 
So we have no way to configure the bits uh, as they are today. Right, because there's no cross-model relations. That's so we, we are still using log stash forwarder for, for pushing logs. And the, the only way we have to configure is to just set the uh, log stash endpoint in, in the subordinate config or in the layer config. OK. So as long as you have a configurable so, connection stream, that should satisfy the immediate need and bugs for anything else that you need? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think that's enough for most of the because we, we, in the case of Alk, we, we end up deploying a single one for the whole team. We, we don't get an Alk stack for each service. Okay. That makes sense to me. Um, happy to do that. And once we get cross model relations, we'll just have two ways to configure the charm. No big deal. Yeah. That that would be amazing when we get that. OK. Is there a feature bug for that yet? I don't think so, no. But that's easy enough. I can just throw that in beat space. They all inherit from the same bits, and that would be the same template logic. So easy enough to add. Um, I think that's it as far as the work that's been done. The Let's talk briefly about the log stash update. I know that we had missed. I believe I was talking to, to pardon me for butchering his name, Andres Hasinak, and he was deploying uh, an IS version of the charm because it had superior NGROC filter support. Is that still the case? Because I believe that you were saying, Tom, that uh, IS isn't even deploying ELK anymore, um, that it was an older uh, revision. And in order to actually deploy that, that was what would be needed is support for loading the IS bits for parsing and munging that data. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not aware of what uh, version there. I can follow up with him after the call and figure out uh, what that is and, you know, this thing means. Yeah, so I think Andreas was starting out with the uh, mode spec that IS had written up, and we're using that for uh, one of our services too right now, just basically a uh, replication of the IS mode spec for the ELK stack in there. And Andreas had added. I can make a couple modifications to get to work with the uh, Xenial landscape, although I haven't looked at the changes recently to so know exactly what he did. OK. Uh, I'm going to circle back on this one then, um, and, I'll own, and I'll own the log stash updates from Andres, because I would like to get that in the current layer that's there. And then since we're going to do the 5.0 update, we might as well just get it all in in one shot. So uh, let me pull this in. This goes over the beats bits. Objective, replace this. Okay. Okay. This is going to be for me. Uh, okay. Um, what other questions do we have? Okay, uh, so we've got four components that we're walking out of here. Uh, the question is, uh, we need owners for each and every one of these components, regardless if that's gonna be owning the actual code writing or owning them as a stakeholder, somebody that's gonna be pushing the progress forward. Uh, so let's, let's share the wealth and see if we can identify some collaborators in here amongst our peers. And uh, I'll, I'll lead us off. I, I pretty much already started this by saying that I'll own layer log stash. I'll follow up with Tom and uh, and everybody else offline uh, in, in Francis so that we can make sure that we've got all those uh, feature requests documented, everything is together before any uh, code is written and we've got a clear path forward. Uh, let's let's take a step back up and who wants to own the beats? <laughs> yeah, crickets. All right, so if nobody owns it, I'm going to assign somebody, and nobody wants that. OK, so for beats, my I'm going to I spy with my little eye. Um, who was actually talking about wanting to use beats as replacement? I believe that that was you, right, Guillermo? All yes. right, you are going to be my owner for beats. Sure. Owned by 
Guillermo. All right, let's talk about Lair Cabana. BD, are you cool with owning this one? I'll own that. All right, and a Lair Elastic Search, arguably the cornerstone of everything here. Who wants to own this one? I'm interested in owning it, but having other people help me drive through some architectural discussions, like super interested or feedback BD and anyone else that's extremely interested and invested in seeing the architecture of Elasticsearch pan out. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I'll own it, I'll drive okay. it. Guillermo. And then this was me, Liz of Power. Okay, so uh, as an owner, I'm gonna be in touch with you in probably two weeks for a follow-up to see how we're going. Uh, we'll evaluate in a week whether or not we need to call another meeting if progress has happened. Uh, let's have an open, let's have an office hour. Do this as an open office hours? Okay. Um, Let's go ahead and get that. Yeah, we haven't had one in a while. We, uh, we should do one like December 2nd after the holidays. Uh, it's about two weeks from now. Yeah, got a month. Or like December 1st or something. December 2nd is a Friday. We'll just have an open office hours where we can chat about other things. Also, these okay. updates. That works for me. Um, I'll put this on the calendar then. I'm going to say Elastic Stack Community Meeting. I, I'm gonna schedule this without a time. Does uh does this time slot does this time slot generally work for people on the call? Yeah, this is good for me. Well, no one else spoke up, so plus one this time slot. Okay, at 12 p.m. CST. All right. Um, I will get this sent out at the end of the meeting. Uh, right now, this just exists on my calendar, so I'll make sure that that goes out. I'll coordinate with George to announce the list. I think that that's everything that I had up at the top, everybody. We managed to cut this out eight minutes early. So if there's any any other business here, uh, let's hear it. Otherwise, uh, I'll be happy to meet up with everybody in December 2nd. Hey, uh, James, BD, you got a few seconds? It's a trap. For Marco. It's a trap. Um, I lied. There's one more question that I have, and this is more of a general open question. So if you have an opinion, please feel free to voice it. How do we resolve long-term maintenance of these charms? Because this isn't the first time we've come in to triage the elastic stack and had, or components of the elastic stack, and then we've had drive-by committers and um, half-hearted maintenance efforts. Is is it fine to just have drive-by active contributors and the list of maintainer just be a maintenance mode janitor where they review pull requests and land it? So. No, we can't just do, we can't just maintenance mode these mean. I mean, elastic the elastic code looks like they're seriously gearing up to be a, a, a like a, a giant elastic stack is their product that's all five zero right now. I imagine that they'll be aggressively updating it for like six zero and lockstep with all the components. We're gonna have to follow it. Anyone who's who's maintained these charms is gonna. I mean, anyone's using these charms is basically become an invested maintainer. If you care about the quality of Elasticsearch. I imagine we'll shake out from in the next couple of weeks, probably the people who are volunteered as leads right now will there'll be just an elastic team and launch on, on, on the charm store where we can push all these underneath the little namespace and then a coordinated effort to make sure that we just stay up to date with the elastic stuff and then as much as we can get help from upstream, either move the repos upstream as well to get more of the community engaged. I'm not sure, but drivers, we can't just let it go to the wayside. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a question, actually. I mean, so obviously this, so this is part of the canonical Kubernetes bundle, and um, obviously that's not as complex a bundle as OpenStack, but you know, it, it's the kind of thing that that like that set of charms has a dedicated team of people to work on it. it are there any plans to have a dedicated team of people working on the Kubernetes stack? Well, that's. We do have a dedicated set of people working on the Kubernetes Hi, stack. I'm Chuck. So should they not be the owners of this? They are actively on this call. Um, right, but, but we're talking about looking for volunteers and we're talking about saying, you know, oh, you know, this person's been assigned and, you know, if you're interested in using these charms, then you should be doing this. Whereas if, if this is part of that stack and, and there are specific people on that, you know that to me that seems like it makes sense it does but there's so, a limitation yes, of resources and that's that's my response to this is that as great as it sounds to have us do these charm updates we tried to get to them and they've been pushed back on our roadmap more than three months at this point i've been trying to get these updated right. since the end of july 
Right. Kubernetes Kubernetes always takes uh, precedence. I mean, it's a hard enough project to keep up with as is because they move so fast. I mean, they released 1.4 last month. They're going to do 1.5 this month. And we, we can hardly keep up on that, so we keep pushing back the Elastic updates on our roadmap because we don't have time or resources to do this. We need other people's help on this as well. So the, the this is, well... <clears throat> Yes, they are included in the Canonical Kubernetes offering bundle today. They are not required for the core Kubernetes offering. They're just simply there as a pointer for best practicing. A logging stack is and a monitoring stack is important. But things like Ceph, Prometheus, other entry points are also supported. They just don't happen to be part of the bundle because it's a sprawling ploy. It's kind of like saying, well, MySQL is part of MySQL, MongoDB, and NTP are all part of OpenStack. Why aren't OpenStack charmers maintaining those core components? Elastic in and of itself is just another product. Um, it should have a dedicated group of people driving it, but it's not necessarily inherently a part of the Kubernetes effort. It just so happens to be a, a piece of integration we, we propose as a first-class citizen. That being said, half of the people on that team are already volunteering to work on components there. So we're very we're very interested in the in the success of the Elastic Stack as charms because we have that as our solution. But we can't be the sole people driving it because we'll just simply fulfill our use cases and it won't be generally applicable to everyone else. Like I want to make sure that online services, IS, James Beattie at Creative Drive and all these other consumers of Elasticsearch, their input is just as valuable as ours for how the integration should work. Sure. Yeah, so, understood. I mean, I, I I'm not trying to say like, hey, this you know, this is your problem, and and you should deal with it. It's more just kind of trying to figure out where the, um, you know, what resources we have available, and because I I honestly didn't didn't know you know who specifically is working on that sort of stuff and what I'm for as well. So I that was where I was coming from more than anything. No, no, absolutely. We are super interested in doing this work alongside our Kubernetes stuff. Absolutely, and that's. That's how we're having this meeting today for the most part. I know Chuck organized it, but there's more people than just us consuming it. So we should definitely uh, we should definitely get everyone that's interested in running it involved, helping to either contribute back to architecture, contribute back code, and get this get this up and running. And I think maintenance will become a lot more apparent, especially if we get some of these harder architectural decisions figured out earlier on. Maintaining it and keeping up to date won't be as necessarily problematic, but I could see Elastic Stack being attached to a bunch of things, including things like OpenStack, uh, our big data stack, and stuff like that. All right. Any additional business in the last two minutes? I want to thank everybody for your time. Uh, I will make sure that we get some uh, some information sent out to the list, as well as get the next meeting scheduled for December 2nd. Uh, same bad time, same bad channel, and I'll be in touch with some of you sooner than that. So with that, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. See you, guys. Hey, James.